Hello everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. This is my 88 Forerunner. This is my 88 R150 transmission. This is my 84 OM617. And today, this weekend, anyway, this stuff's all going together. So, quick recap for you guys who don't know or haven't been following. That's out of a 1984 300 SD. Uh, it's got a 7.5 millimeter diesel mech and pump. It'll have, I don't know, some aftermarket turbo. I have an HX30. I might use an HE221. We'll see. I already had the HX30, so I'm kind of leaning that way. Uh, serpentine setup from Doomsday Diesel. R150 Trans. This is an automatic 4Runner. I have this basically hanging here. Um, I've installed my throw bearing clutch fork. It's got a 38 pound LC engineering flywheel on it. Um, I'm going to cut a plate out of that for my jack to throw the transmission on. And I'm going to roll up under here and try to marry these two things together. So we'll be back in a moment. So I feel like if you're watching my channel, you know the struggle, <laughs> you know, you don't just share memes about it, you live that shit. Um, took the front drive shaft out, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take the sway bar off. You see the engine up there, it's pretty close to the drive shaft flange right now, but I can tilt it back forward. Um, my little trans jack's not working so hot, I'll probably need to rotate this around. To, uh, hold the length lace, but uh, we're moving along. It's been about 30 minutes, so hopefully, I can work this out without getting too frustrated here. Um, if I do get too frustrated, I guess I'll come back to it tomorrow. I got all day Saturday, so I'll bring you guys back when I have it actually up to the back of the engine before I start a bolt, or maybe after I start one bolt. We'll see. all right um you know when you're working alone you have to be creative so i'll show you guys what i did here i bear with me so i had to extend the cross member back with a doomsday bracket kit and I wanted that to set the fore and aft location. So I took this ratchet strap off that little furniture moving dolly over there, wrapped it around the fore runner, ratcheted the rear up, jacked the front up, um, and then lifted the transmission and transfer case, the cross member into position. There's this uh, little nub that it kind of locates on. It's not bolted in yet. I gotta round up some bolts and I'll deal with that tomorrow, it's getting kind of dark. But tomorrow I can unstrap this, hopefully. Um, lift that, drop, push the motor back. Hazelnut will be here to help. Hello, Hazelnut. Yeah, mate the two of them together. Go, go gadget truck. So once I have the two of these mated together, it looks like I have to go back a couple inches, which looks like it'll give me ample room here. Um, I have some like two by two, I don't know what it is, whatever, one, one and a half by one and a half steel that I'll drop off to my motor mounts and I'll build a outrigger down there and then I'll lift it up fully weld it and we'll be done mounting the engine hopefully so yeah um making good progress it's almost dark out i'm not gonna work at night it's like 40 degrees out here anyway i'm wearing a t-shirt still but uh 
yeah, I'll bring you guys back tomorrow. We'll continue. All right, it's the next day. I got my helpers. What's up, Peanut? Peanut's ready to go in the house. Um, the transmission's up, bolted to the cross member. Right now, I'm just struggling with uh, getting the clutch onto the input shaft while it hangs. I can't. I don't really have a good way to pick it up squarely, um, so it wants to roll over that way. And then, once I get it in there, because I'm sure I will. Um, I should have kept the, in, the injection pump off. I might take that off right now. Um, and then I'll level it out and build my mounts. So we'll go from there. And we're back. I had a visit from a friend for a little while. That was a nice break. But uh, we are mounted up. We got the transmission bolted to the engine. Mostly, sort of, whatever. There's four bolts in it they're together um i have the tilt where i want it i have it centered side to side i have ample room to my radiator that's the mercedes radiator and i haven't decided if i'm going to use it or if i'm going to use a three liter uh, v6 one they'll actually fit up and back i own that one right now so you know that's a point in its favor um we'll see I have plenty of room down there to my steering, as you can see. Uh, I think we're good to go here. So what I'm gonna do, I have these plates that are way bigger than I need them to be. I have these hydraulic mounts from a Ford 306. They're like $32 for the pair. Um, in order to sit that where it can mount to that without going all the way to the top i have to put the plate like at the bottom of the frame rail so this is too far i have to trim it up but that'll go down there like that that mount will go on top of it and then i have this that i cut out of a table at work that they were scrapping um so i'm going to chop this down to like a couple inches and the nut that fits on this mount fits right in there with a socket it's like perfect so just some fab work right now and uh we'll be good to go here and we're in this is fit number two or three or whatever it's the first time sitting on the motor mounts i feel as if it's tilted a little way that way leaning a little bit driver's side i'm not quite sure if i care about that um it's typical for engines to have a little bit of clocking i'm certainly not going to hurt anything any more than driving down the road at a slight slant uh this mount here on this side is not quite level or square um so i had to fix that on this side apparently that nut that i picked up is the wrong thread and i stripped that mount i'm not really sure what i'm going to do about that yet either um the plates welded the frames have have no gusseting i've not addressed that yet but I do have the full range of my steering. I had to go in and cut that where the uh, steering stabilizer mounted off so that that can shoot under the oil pan. Um, now I have the full range of steering. On a really nice note, um, it's not the right shape, but my shifter wound up in my shifter hole. So that's nice. This transmission is it's an R150. It's back four inches from stock. Um, I'd say that there's ample room for a radiator. This is a stock radiator, and I said I didn't know if I was going to use it or not, but I just realized when I was messing with it a little while ago that I cut the outlet off of it. So I guess that settles that. Um, plenty of room with the doomsday serpentine kit though for fans in the front that's cool i'm gonna grab the hood and throw it on here real quick plenty of room to the radiator plenty of room to the time valve cover so i think that i'll probably go ahead and get the uh oh oh the three liter v6 radiator maybe it's a little bit wider and a little bit taller but uh I mean, this project's more or less done for this weekend. I'm gonna put nuts on the engine mounts, uh, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up and we'll haul it back up 
to the corner and wait on our little parts to show up. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy. We'll, I'm looking forward to seeing it run. I hope you guys are. We'll see you next time on the Dryway Engineer.